Mining has been an industry in the region we now know as New Mexico since prehistoric times. As a result of centuries of mining, abandoned mines can be found scattered throughout the state. These mines are an ever-present danger for unknowing citizens. The Abandoned Mine Land Program is leading reclamation efforts in order to accomplish historic preservation, maintain wildlife habitats, and, above all, safeguard the public from the dangers posed by the legacy of New Mexico's abandoned mines. The history of mining in New Mexico is an important part of our cultural and geologic heritage. New Mexico has a tremendous mining history. When you look at mining and mining history and when you look at the, at the, the remnants of mines that exist in New Mexico today, one of the things that people need to keep in their mind is that New Mexico probably would not be here were it not for mining. A number of things that were mined prehistorically. Native Americans um, actually were mining certain areas around the state for for turquoise, for pigments, for pottery. It extends into the Spanish colonial period. Mining was used then both for, for turquoise, for silver, copper, and then into the early American colonial period here in New Mexico. We had a boom, obviously, with much of Western the U.S. at the same time in the late 19th century, early 20th century, with mining across the state both coal mining, hard rock mining, gold, silver, lead, zinc were among the commodities that people were looking for. Copper mining became a big industry in this state, dating back to the early 1800s and on through into the present. It's still one of the largest commodities mined in New Mexico. The Spanish probably would not have settled New Mexico if the Spanish explorers hadn't come here and found promising silver ores. A new technique for refining silver ores was developed in 1554 and made silver mining ten times more profitable than it had been, which made the Oñate family very wealthy in Zacatecas. And with that money, Juan de Oñate financed the settlement of New Mexico. So without mining, New Mexico might never have existed. Coal mining and hard rock mining remain an active industry in New Mexico today. Particularly the western two-thirds, the northwest portion of the state uh, is dominated today by coal mines and has often had uh, coal mining in it, in the Gallup area, the Farmington area, Grants area. A lot of the mining in New Mexico is non-coal mining or what's sometimes referred to as hard rock mining. This includes minerals such as gold, silver, lead, and other minerals such as fluorite and also uranium. The modern mining industry places an emphasis on safe practices and responsible reclamation. It is the remains of older mining operations that pose serious safety issues. Abandoned mines can be found many places in New Mexico and including places where people may not expect or intend to come across an abandoned mine. There are many physical hazards associated with abandoned mines. Danger of falling in shafts, the danger of collapse, the dangers of bad air or insufficient oxygen. All of these can be traps for the unwary and the unprepared. And for anyone who really does not fully understand what the hazards of abandoned mines, and that includes all of us. Traditional mining was very different than today's modern mining practices. Mines in the past were dug mostly by hand as miners followed the valuable ore into the earth. There is a specific terminology associated with abandoned mines. Hard rock mining comes with its own unique terminology. Big opening behind me here is called an open stope. It wasn't always an open stope, it used to be an attic. People see mine openings and they call them shafts. These terms have very, very specific meanings. Mines are dug to follow an externally visible vein of valuable ore into a formation. An adit is a horizontal mine entry. The opening to an adit is referred to as a portal. An adit can become a tunnel if it is open at both ends. The top of an adit is referred to as the back and the sides are referred to as the ribs. Miners often dug directly down to follow a vein. A shaft is a vertical mine feature. The opening to a shaft is referred to as a collar. 
A sump can be described as a continuation of a shaft, specifically dug to protect other parts of the mine from flooding. Consider a sump a collection cup for excess rain or groundwater. Drifts are horizontal underground mine passages dug off a shaft to follow the vein in an attempt to mine as much valuable ore as possible. A winds is a shaft dug within an adit or drift to explore the lower level of ground for ore below the original vein. If an adit or drift is successful in following a vein to a large ore body, a stope will be made by removing all the available ore. The resulting stope can resemble a cavern. Larger stopes are often referred to as ballrooms. If a stope reaches the surface, it is referred to as an open stope. Many people may be curious about abandoned mines, but they should beware, for the dangers are real. What we estimate to be 15,000 mine hazards across the state are from that period, prior to later in the 20th century when reclamation laws came into effect. And these are shafts, adits, various ways to get into the ground, either horizontal or vertical, that are left open today and that could be pose a danger to the public. Well, my son fell down a mine when he was 18 and died. It's very heartbreaking to have a tragedy like this happen to anyone. I'm wanting to get them all closed and I want to be able to save somebody else's life. I miss him so much. Please excuse me. This has been the most painful thing I've ever had to go through in my whole entire life. The pain that I feel every single day because of my son's death. And it was because of these abandoned mines that he knew nothing about. We need to educate all of our people on these, the parents, the children, the teenagers that don't know. The abandoned mine land program started with the passage of the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1977 by the U.S. Congress. Under this act, coal mines that are active are assessed a fee. The act is also set up primarily to take care of the physical hazards and environmental detriments of abandoned coal mines. There is provision in the act to take care of the physical hazards of non-coal sites which is good for the western states since the majority of the problems in the western states tend to be non-coal sites. The primary mission of the Abandoned Mine Land Program is safeguarding abandoned mines and educating the public about their physical dangers. With funding provided by the Office of Surface Mining, or OSM, the Abandoned Mine Land Program is able to conduct the research necessary to locate abandoned mines and alert the public to stay away. Because, while abandoned mines may seem alluring to some, they are incredibly unsafe. First and foremost thing people need to keep in mind when approaching any abandoned mine is to stay out and stay alive. That's the best policy. Abandoned mines present numerous hazards to the public, primarily health and safety hazards. The people need to be aware that these mines are dangerous, that anything can happen when they walk into them. In New Mexico, we have about 15,000 abandoned mine structures that are similar to this one that are yet to be reclaimed. And uh, there's scarcely a year that goes by that some citizen is not compromised, either killed or injured, by entering some kind of an abandoned mine working. An old shaft is a dangerous place to be in. These mines were not built to last for centuries and they were often built centuries ago. Even things that look relatively benign can trap you if you're, if you're not careful. The dangers are real. As you begin to see the deadly hazards present in abandoned mines, one also begins to see why the best policy is to stay out and stay alive. Yeah, there are a couple dangers associated with abandoned mine shafts. The most obvious, of course, is falling into the shaft. The edges of the shaft could be an unconsolidated material where it'd be possible for the material to collapse underneath one's weight as a person approaches the edge of the shaft opening. There's some really dangerous openings. There's some deep shafts. 
and there are houses built all around these coal mines. So for this reason, this is a real priority for us to close these mines. People seem to be fascinated by those and they want to get up and look down on them or throw something down on them. And, and should they slip and fall in it, there's, it's going to be a disaster. This shaft is only 35 feet deep. If a person were to fall in, they could get seriously injured or even killed. And a cry for help would just not be heard in this remote location. Just the other day, I was back there riding and uh, just checking pastures and checking the cattle. And, and darn, you know, you just ride up on a ridge and, and all of a sudden there's a mine. It just surprised me because it was, it was there. I thought I knew where every mine on this place was, but I was wrong. And some of these mines are six feet deep and some of them are 60 feet deep, you know. So, so you really have to watch what you're doing because it is dangerous. It's extremely dangerous.